I'm sure that you're all excited, of course, in uh, Accra, the capital of Ghana here. It's a wet morning, and uh, I don't know if to call it uh, showers of blessing or post-showers of blessing. Well, that's how uh, the story happened at the Babara Stadium in Kumasi, where the Black Stars uh, recorded a very vintage performance uh, against uh, Egypt. Egypt was fast becoming a nemesis for the Black Stars team, but all of that is behind uh, uh, the Black Stars now. The Black Stars are said to have one foot already in Brazil uh, with 75% uh, of the job done for qualification for Brazil. And now the uh, focus is on how to replicate the performance uh, against uh, Egypt in the return leg, which uh, will be played at the yet-to-be-confirmed venue. Thank you very much for making us your number one choice for everything sport. This is the midweek edition of Sports Today. It's only here on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Well, we'll be bringing you up to the minute action from the Babara Stadium and how it happened just in case you missed the action last night. And we'll also be bringing you some interviews, uh, post-match interviews with what everybody's saying after this very big game. Can Egypt uh, survive uh, back there in the return leg? Uh, can they recover? That will surely be a very, very big story. Right now, qualification to Brazil is looking very, very possible now. And so you out there, tell me um, how you think the Black Stars can replicate uh, this performance in the return leg, which will be played on November 19th. Send a text message is 1760 for 30 Ghana pesos and also get on my Facebook page, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. And let's get talking because uh, this show is very, very heavy on your views, as you always know. We'll also be going into Europe where England have sealed qualification alongside some other countries. But the likes of Denmark will uh, not uh, taste World Cup action. Uh, the likes of France will have to go into playoffs again. Remember what happened with France ahead of the South Africa 2010 World Cup? Hmm. Well, they have to go into playoffs again uh, together with some other countries who are not very clear on qualification. So I will also be telling you the very, very riveting and very, very interesting story of Sarajevo, uh, the uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, whose uh, capital is Sarajevo. And for the very first time in their history, they have qualified for the World Cup. Remember the story that Croatia told in 1998 on their first qualification for the World Cup? Well, yes. Uh, Bosnia Herzegovina is also telling a similar story after qualifying for the very first World Cup with a one goal win in their playoff uh, played uh, last night. We'll be bringing you all of those and more here on the show on this uh, World Cup qualification concentrated edition of uh, Sports Today only here on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. So let's get on Facebook, let's get talking and let's get the messages in as we look at how the Black Stars can manage to do a replication of this uh, uh, you know, performance that was posted against Egypt last night in the second leg of the uh, playoffs on November 19. Send a text message on Facebook. That surely is for free, but it's for only 30 Ghana pesos if you're on your mobile phone and you want to be part of the show. The newspapers in a bit. Remember, this is Sports Today. It's only here on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. You stay there. show thus and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. only on Joy Sports the Premier League show Multi TV is organizing a national installer training throughout the country the training is for fresh people who would like to learn about satellite installation trainees will also go through some marketing tutorials to turn them into results-oriented salesmen for those in the eastern region Training will be on the 10th of October. Pick a form at Satellite Zone in Koforidia. For those in Somania, training will be on the 12th of October. Pick a form at Technosat. For those in the Central Region, training will be on the 15th of October. Pick a form at Takulaha in Cape Coast. For those in the Western Region, training will be on the 17th of October. Pick a form at Antaf in Takrade. For those in the Greater Accra region, training will be on the 22nd to 24th October. Pick a form at the Multi TV office. For those in the Volta region, training will be on the 29th October. Pick a form at Jehome in Ho. 
And for those in Hohoe, training will be on the 30th of October. Pick a form at Creative Ventures or call 0302-211-688 or 0244-340-424 and 0244-340-415. Splitting party, networking defending, crucial saves, heart and mouth moments, and breathtaking goals of a beautiful game. Theo Walcott, what a magnificent individual goal! Everything football on the football show on the Joy Sports Channel and Multi TV from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays. My name is George Addy Jr. and with my team of experts, expect greater sharp analysis as we cover every conceivable angle and examine every scenario of the old beautiful game. Remember, it's Mondays and Fridays on the Joy Sports channel. This show is powered by Joy Sports, the thrill of the game. All right, so there we are. Let's get into what's on the newspapers. Uh, I've got the uh, graphic sports, the hearts news, uh, 90 minutes and also the Kotoko Express newspapers. It's uh, midweek, like I mentioned to you, and uh, the graphic sports is very big on this uh, very big win uh, by the Black Star. 6-1. Nobody really expected this. There we are. So it's a celebration time. And the Black Stars surely are on fire. Many reactions are coming from within Kumasi after this very big uh, vintage uh, performance. And now uh, there we are. Okay, let's also get into uh, what uh, the Lifestyle page has got for us. Uh, Abdul Majid Waris is featured here. The man who is recording a lot of consistency for the Black Stars team. Made a scoring debut, scored yesterday, and uh, is just building the credentials nicely. Youthful striker with a lot of promise, was also delivering when given the opportunity. Uh, one of the very good decisions taken by coach uh, Kwesi Apea. Okay, so... Um, now, the Ghana uh, Olympic Committee is proposing that we use VAT and uh, a lottery to fund sports. Now, uh, there it is, uh, Professor Francis uh, Dodu. He is the uh, boss of the uh, Ghana Olympic Committee. So, there we are. You might want to, you know, uh, take a look at this. It's the first part of um, a series. And also, we get into the center spread and, of course, what else would you expect but Ghana, Egypt? And this is how the score, uh, scoreboard read after 90 minutes of action. It was Ghana 6, Egypt 1. Nobody expected this kind of scoreline, honestly. Egypt managed to pull one back through uh, a well-taken uh, penalty uh, by... Um, the man, Mohamed Abu Trika, whose name was on the lips of many. And of course, a uh, very, very sad story there. Coach Bruno Metsu, who sent Senegal to the World Cup in 2002, has passed on. Sad story indeed. Okay, so the 2014 Commonwealth Games is apparently not on um, Mo Farah's list. Okay, and Mo Farah, the British uh, long-distance runner. Okay, let's get into some more, uh, you know, of the stories we've got in the newspapers. This is what is on the um, front page of the 90 Minutes newspaper. It has a full match report of Ghana versus Egypt. 
and how it all happened. Ghana, Egypt, Sheikh Kumasi. That's uh, the match report there. Let's take a quick look at the center spread of the 90 Minutes newspaper. And there we are. So there's a very big picture. Uh, getting back into time with uh, Stephen Appiah, John Mensah, and the player Andre Dedeayu. That's the center spread. The established and the big names are uh, giving more inspiration to the younger ones. Accra Hearts evoke uh, Sink Chelsea. Okay, that's the headline here uh, on the front page of the uh, Hearts News. And of course, it's a 15-15 situation at the top of the league table. So there we are. Accra Hearts evoke. And of course, uh, this is uh, bits of the action and how it all happened that resulted in getting a Krahat of Oak that very good position. Also, um, another thriller in Kumasi and uh, Asante Kotoko are looking forward to home points. There we are. So there we are. That's the front page of the Kotoko Express newspaper. I remember Asante Kotoko are defending champions and are also leading on the log sheet. And they would uh, want to maintain that status quo. And uh, there it is, uh, a profile of uh, goalkeeper Joseph Adu, a picture profile. Um, he is referred to as the shot stopper. Goalkeeper Joseph Adu there. Alright, so in a bit we'll be getting onto the phone line and talking to the man Tony Bebley who's getting ready to fly back to Accra. But send a message on my Facebook page, it's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Let's get talking about the Black Stars and how you think they can uh, replicate uh, the performance that was put up yesterday at the Babayara Stadium. And also, do you think that qualification is certain or is a done deal? Well, send a message, 1760, and also get on my Facebook wall and let's start talking. In the meantime, we will now take a look at the big highlights of that big game, the history-making game at the Bavara Stadium. Messier, not a favourite at club level, still a star at international level, worries to Jan, Asamo Jan scores! Five minutes in, and Ghana are in the lead. It's their captain, Asamo Jan, leading from the front. His 38th international goal and his 76th appearance for his country. It was a fantastic finish after good work from Waris. Jan spurned an opportunity in the first minute, but when the second came along, he made no mistake. And James Quezzi appears. Garner have the lead. Jan getting the wrong side of the visiting defence played in behind Najib driving away and that is a fantastic shot from an awkward angle play to Andre Ayu Ayu past the first man Essien came from an onside position Michael Essien brilliant play from Essien oh did he take one touch too far it's gone in it's an own goal it's off Goma the Egyptian captain and Ghana have their second goal it's no more than they deserve Agony for Sheriff Ekrami in more ways than one. Possession conceded very sloppily by Walid Solomon. Andre Ayu did well, released Michael Essien. A trademark first forward from him. He cut inside the first man and Goma tried to make the challenge as the keeper Ekrami came out as well. And Goma succeeded only in putting the ball through his own net. What a cut inside by Michael Essien. He took Najib out of the game. The referee points to the spot. 
out of the blue. The shove by Rashid Sumaila, who has just been booked for a foul on Mohamed Salah. And he's now committed another. That's clumsy defending from the 20-year-old Mamelodi Sundowns player. And the responsibility for the spot kick falls on Mohamed Abu Traker. Seen as a living legend by Egyptian football fans. He scored five goals in six qualifiers as Egypt reached this playoff round. Mohamed Abu Traker against Fato Dauda. The goalkeeper is getting advice from Samuel Nkoum. Abu Traker, very calmly done from the veteran. His 38th international goal, his 98th appearance. And something to shout about for the travelling supporters. Egypt much improved in the last 10 to 15 minutes of the half and they've got their reward with Abu Traker sending Dowda the wrong way Garner could have been two goal cushion before the interval <laughs> Suleiman Tari to take the free kick it's a very good one and it's 3-1 It is Waris who went so close with a header kept out by Ekrami earlier in the half and he has got the goal. Najib to Solomon now playing at left back. Andre Ayu back on the field and keeping it in well. Teasing El Mohamedi, the whole city man. Andre Ayu, trying to trick his way past the right back and earning the free kick. El Mohamedi, the former. Sunderland man, as indeed is the Ghanaian captain, Asamo Jan. <laughs> Muntari's free kick can be kept in by Akamunke. Nice skill from the centre half. It's cross from Mantari. Mantari, like Asimur, plays his club football in Syria. Mantari at AC Milan. Garley loses it to Asimur Jan. Here's Waris. Off his line comes the keeper El Shinawi. Who got there first? I thought it was Waris. Yellow for the keeper and a penalty to Garner. A penalty per side in this game. El Shinawi feels that Waris made rather a lot of that. Waris definitely there first. We need this angle to try to sort things out. Well, if he doesn't get the ball and he gets the man, it has to be a penalty and a yellow card. El Shinawi would argue that the left hand did make contact with the ball. Suleiman Tari to take. Ghana, a country that has suffered penalty heartache down the years, notably 
at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. There's a yellow there for Goma for protesting. Han Muntari match the Abu Traker penalty for Egypt. Abu Traker's was a composed finish from 12 yards. Sully Montari sends El Chinawi the wrong way, low into the corner, 5-1 Ghana. This would be a record win for them over the Egyptians. It's gone exactly as James Preziapia would have hoped. They have blown Egypt away here. Nicely done by Suleiman Tari. Sending the crowd in Kumasi wild once again. Messia. Space here for Asamoah. Lukasek. Asamoah. Click on by Essien. Badu. Atsu now trying to accelerate play. Christian Atsu. Oh, it's in. It's six. The substitute scores. Christian Atsu. That's the icing on the cake for Ghana. He scored once in three qualifying matches. The 21-year-old who made his international debut only last year. One of a whole host of really promising Ghanaian players. His form with Porto earned him a move to Chelsea on a five-year deal. They immediately loaned him out to Vitesse Arnhem. Well, that is a glimpse of what Christian Atsu can do. And that surely now, beyond any shadow of a doubt, is Ghana booking their ticket for Brazil. In off the post. Exceptional play from Christian Atsu. An exceptional match from the Black Stars. They have thrashed the Pharaohs here. Yeah. All the play for in the others. And this one has been done and dusted. It's settled here in the Babiara Stadium in Kumasi. The Black Stars of Ghana 6. Egypt 1. Would you credit it? A marvellous display from James Kwesi, player's team. Jan, the captain, leading from the front with a couple of goals. Juarez, Muntari, and Atsu all on the score sheet, plus an own goal from Goma. Abu Traika with the only goal that Egypt managed. This one of the worst evenings of Bob Bradley's coaching career. His United States lost to Ghana in the second round of the 2010 World Cup. But it was only 2-1 then. 6-1 tonight, and there is the second leg to come in Cairo. Those fans have a long trip home. 
the second leg on November the 19th and barring a miracle it will be Ghana taking their place at the 2014 FIFA World Cup in Brazil. Okay, so you heard the commentator. He was asking a question about whether uh, Ghana can take Egypt's uh, hoped place at uh, the World Cup in Brazil in 2014. Uh, I'm sure that you've got answers to that. Um, now let's uh, take a look at some of the messages that are coming in. Ivan Skofinana says, uh, Nat, Stephen, Apea, John Mensa, John Pinto, Olili, Matthew, Amwa, Agogo, and the likes should be called to feature in the match against Egypt and that we will be able to... Um, and Egypt will not be able to overturn the scoreline. Brazil, here we come. Ganaba Junior, Ganaba. Uh, this says, uh, uh, good morning. He doesn't add uh, anything. Uh, Oparibia O2 says, I think the bonus should be given to them when they bring the cup back from Brazil. Okay, that's a bit of a tall order, if you ask me. Uh, that's um, Kofi Owusu. Um, Okay, Kofi also asks, you mean Bruno Metsu has passed on to the other world? Uh, yes, uh, yes, he has passed on. Uh, yes, he has passed on. Um, sad story indeed. Coach Bruno Metsu who sent Brazil to the um, World Cup uh, in 2002 uh, passes on. Nana Yauda Costa says, thanks be to God, we really enjoyed uh, the win with the Salah. My man of the match is Michael Essien. Greetings uh, to all friends of the media. Okay, and then Nyande Isaac says, uh, sad one there. Okay, he's talking about uh, Bruno Messu uh, passing on. Okay, so uh, there, are, there is more. Uh, there were some uh, reactions after the game. We spoke to some players. Uh, let's take a look at what they had to say. Jan, six goals to one. You played very, very well. We doff our hearts on behalf of the people of Ghana. But your general impressions of the game so far? Yeah, incredible performance for, for the team. You know, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the whole of Ghana for, for their support. You know, um, uh, let's come back to the game. You know, we started so well. You know, we had um, the first time in, in about 20, 20, 20 seconds of the game. You know, I should have buried that ball. But, um, you know, it's one of those things. You know, after we, we, we backed it up, um, we came um, and we scored um, very early. You know, when you score early in these kind of games, it's really, really important for the team. You know, so um, we, we, we tried our best and... Uh, but actually, uh, honestly, I didn't expect these goals today. But uh, with the determination of the, of the, of the players and uh, the heart of the players, no, we, we did so well today. And um, I'd like to congratulate everybody. You have played very, very well. You have played very, very well all this while. Uh, but today was absolutely extraordinary. What went into that? Thank you. Um, you know, um, as I always say, I, I like to give all my best to, to help the team to win in most of the games. You know, uh, as a captain, um, I have to just take the boys on to, to play well. You know, I always die for my nation, and this is what everybody saw today. Thank you very much. I like to thank the whole of Ghana. Well, uh, you had the captain of the side, Asamo Chan, uh, expressing his views. We are having bits of difficulties here, and uh, we are summing up. Samuel Inkum is here, and as well as Sile Montari. Uh, just one word from Sile Montari. Sile, your views so far on the match? Yeah, amazing. Uh, a special day. Uh, for us Muslims and uh, the whole Ghana, because uh, Ghana, Ghana, uh, we have we have great people, we have great uh, nation. You know, uh, it's one of the peace, uh, peaceful nation in the world. So this victory goes to to our people. We, they've been they've been uh, fantastic today. So that's what we can do. We are ready in Brazil. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. We're gonna we're gonna go there. We're gonna go to Egypt and beat them again. So definitely, yeah. Everyone should get his ticket. Thank you very much. Well, Samuel uh, Nkumi Samuel, we're having a hectic time, but Samuel, six goals to one. For some time, you were having difficulty getting to the team. You back playing so well. Your views about the match? Yeah, first of all, we need to give thanks to the Almighty God. I think today it was so fantastic. We play as a team. The tactical discipline was there. I think, uh, me to me, I would just give thanks to the Almighty God. Well, uh, tactically, what would so right for you? Because we've never seen this team play so comprehensively at this venue, although we've been doing well, today was just extraordinary. That's what I'm saying. We determined that we are going to the World Cup, so we need to do everything we can. You can see we are on the fi we are on fire, and uh, uh, we need to do everything we can to go to Brazil. Some of us have not bought our tickets. Do we need to go and buy our tickets right now for Brazil? Of course, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so credit to uh, GTV, uh, the station of the nation. They brought uh, the live. Uh, 
coverage of that game and we give credit to uh, GTV once again, GTV Sports for uh, those interviews uh, after the game. There were reactions from the fans as well and I'm sure you are itching to see uh, what they had to say. What Brazil have done for Ghana, we have achieved total victory and we are going to qualify to Brazil 2014. Well, thank you very much. My brother is here. Ali Maradona is here. Ali, live on Marty TV. What do you have to say? Well, what I'll say is uh, we, we need to thank Allah first. Apart from that, we need to take this match as a draw before we go to Egypt. Definitely, Ghana will be at the Brazil. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just have to fly all the way from New York just to watch this game. Because we believe in Ghana, we're going to Brazil. So we're hoping to see a Ghanaians over there. Okay, we still have some ladies here. Yes. Thank God for everything that's happening. You get it? Because I'm, I'm really I'm happy. I'm happy for Ghana. And I hope we do um, our best in the uh, upcoming um, uh, soccer. Like the, everything we are going to do. I pray we do our best. My problem is complacency. They score one and they relax. Just as they did today. When they even score ten, they should keep on scoring until we close. That's the advice I'll give to them. You get it. Uh, my secret is Black Star 6, Egypt 1. It's incredible. Because I wasn't expecting that though. Because before the game will start, people were like, e Egypt and Ghana, Egypt and Ghana, Charlie, the match will be tough. But trust me, they really done well and I love Ghana forever. Car schools and uh, players in the like actually they, they, they've surprised me in a way. Yeah. So I think that that's what I can say for now. We we're so happy. You can see we are at Wembley and um, the boys the boys really did well. I, I can really say the boys are good. Now they should they should keep on doing the same thing when they go to Egypt. So we get more more, more score line when they, they they go to Egypt. And I promise we we're going to go to the World Cup and we're going to do more. And we can even go to the finals and even win the World Cup if we keep on playing like this. Now the team is very so strong. So they should keep on doing the same thing. Yeah. We, we, we thank, we thank Kwesi Apia for the, the good work that he has done. Yeah, sure. There's no return match. I think, I mean, the deal is done. There's no return. So it's over. I mean, our next match, match I, even if we don't go, I think we shouldn't even go to play. We score six. We score six. Calf should give us three, uh, two points, three goals. Calf should, should give us two points. Three goals for each match. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, our the return match is just a mere formality, you know. But just we are going to play just to fulfill the first instruction. That's what. That's the whole thing that we have to go to the Egypt, you know. Because this one, there's no. Uh, can, they, can they come back and score it? Five for what? That's a major. You know, you know when, when, when we when we play, when we, if we want to go to Egypt and we play at, at their presidential palace. When we play at their presidential palace, we go to score them in their pre presidential palace, you know. So I mean, it's a damn deal for us, Ghana. One step ahead, you know. This, you know, this team can take the World Cup. This Ghana can take the World Cup. Yeah, I'm telling you, you know. Yeah, so Brazil, here we come. Big up, Black Star players, man. Moses, Moses has led her to the promised land. <laughs> Who is Pharaoh to stop us? Fans have really made us proud, and we are happy about it. So we are all enjoying. I think for the first time I've seen the Black Star to concentrate throughout the 90 minutes. You no, know, sometimes when they score so much goals, they kind of lose some concentration. But this time around, they were so focused and so aggressive. So I think that that made a trick, you know. That made us so happy. This is the Black Star is one, and we are proud of them. Yeah, so this call for celebration, you know. We know they can make it, but not to this, I mean, level. They've done well and they deserve celebration. It's because of the football match, you know. Uh, as a nation, we're united to support the Blasters in winning. So, I mean, they, they've got a good victory. And I think that, you know, uh, we, we have a cause to celebrate. Overall, I think they did best. We, we did play some pretty football. So that's why I think that we, we, we celebrate in the problem. Hey, all right, so you saw the fans and you saw the cups and the glasses. Uh, let's not go into what the contents were. So uh, everybody is excited. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we're trying to get through to Tony Bebley, who is supposed to be getting on flight to get back to Accra 
Okay, so uh, Tony Bebley is on the phone line. Uh, Tony, thank you very much for joining us here on the show. Uh, tell me, what is it looking like on the streets of Kumasi the morning after this very significant win? Thank you very much, Nana. It's all surprises and shock, and uh, nobody believes it, and that uh, Egypt could suffer. 6 1 thrashing at the, uh, the hands of the Black Stars. And yesterday, one amazing thing was that tactically, the Black Stars were up and they dominated every department of play, making Egyptians look as if they've never played football like before. And also, they, they're well experienced. Wael Goma, the likes of Mohamed Abu Trika, the Dijama Mohamed Salah, were all surprised the way the Black Stars played yesterday. And I said it earlier on, it's all about the system. Cause Deployed, which will not allow you to play it again. The goals were coming in just um, 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 15 minutes, 15 minutes, the goals were just coming in. And they were lucky that uh, uh, we, we could have even recorded a 10-goal a ten goal margin, and which uh, I think that uh, come what may, if the return leg is going to be possible. But information we hear is that FIFA has written to the Egyptian FA that they need to look for a venue for the return leg on November 19th, not. Okay, so um, what about the Black Stars team? What is their itinerary going away uh, from here? What's, what's happening yeah. to them? What's, uh, have they started moving away, uh, flying back to their respective clubs? Yes, um, yesterday it was still a Leo Muntari who left uh, by road with Adam Kwara. Say they were the only two people who were missed, uh, who were not in the hotel after last night. But this morning, most of them will be going uh, to various uh, um, clubs and uh, they'll be um, planning to Accra first and just see some family members and move out to their various clubs. And uh, so the situation is some of the players who are based in Kumasi have also taken the opportunity to go and see families, the likes of Awar Mohammed, Rashid Smara and Co. They've all moved out to see some family members in Kumasi. Okay. Tony, tell me about, uh, you know, uh, what, what this Black Stars game has done for businesses in Kumasi and, you know, um, and, 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 you know, uh, you know, businesses around the immediate environs of the stadium. Uh, so that people will have a better appreciation of what the Black Stars are always do whenever they play uh, here in town. You know, as I said, um, when it comes to um, occasional sellers, for big games like that, uh, they make big, 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 uh, lots of money, or with the paraphernalia that they do around the black stars, uh, from banners, from replica chases, uh, from food vendors. Yesterday, whole Kumasi, um, uh, around the, the surroundings of the Kumasi Stadium, was packed with occasional sellers who made lots of money because all many people came from all walks of life to witness this game yesterday and I could tell you most of them bagged in so much money and all uh, surprisingly other food vendors came from Accra to set up here our, our, our own Nitego Stadium also was here to set up and uh, to do business as usual to sell food but uh, the unfortunate thing is that yesterday was a holiday but today being a working day uh, the streets of Kumasi looks a little bit calm because most 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 of the spectators who came who tend to watch the game uh, some are returning to Accra to uh, attend to their various jobs and uh, also in Kumasi those who, who, who took the opportunity to come and watch the game have also returned home. So for the streets of Kumasi, it's a little bit dead silent. And uh, people are also surprised with the scoreline. And people still don't believe because they still think it's a mystery. And uh, uh, they are daydreaming. And so uh, that is the situation in Kumasi. All right. Um, also tell me, um, there were very, very thick arrangements for security for the game. Now, um, how did things go as regards to the security arrangements and, uh, you know, the delivery of the security job by the police? Not security, I would say yesterday, um, 99% uh, everywhere. I checked um, where there were rumors that there were ticket rocketeers and uh, there were there are about 1,000, over 100 uh, army officers were deployed, of uh, police officers uncountable, and other private security officers. So yesterday at uh, the Babarang Sports Stadium, every spectator was saved, media men were saved because the security men were placed at the point to make sure that everything is calm, nobody misbehaves, and uh, the game ended 
um, peacefully without any um, um, problems occurring to where we, we, we really didn't notice. Okay, also tell me about the few Egyptian fans who managed to make it to the Babayara Stadium. Uh, we saw them, we saw them celebrate very wildly when uh, Abu Trika scored that penalty. Uh, yeah. How was it like, their interactions with the Ghanaian fans and all? Yes, um, um, I was spectatorship. I think that Egyptians came uh, normally over 200. And uh, when their game, their, their goal came, they all went bowed up. They all went down, bowed down their heads. And uh, started saying uh, Allah Akbar because they believed that they wanted to score more. But uh, the Ghanaian fans, and I think kudos to the Ghana supporters who were on their feet for the past 20 minutes. But uh, one thing I observed that Unity Hall, Conti, uh, the, the, the charts from there sunk throughout the entire 90 minutes, even after the game, went to the hotel of the Black Stars, cheered them up. But uh, when speaking to some colleague journalists, they were really disappointed with Bob Bradley because they, they thought that uh, their goalkeeper, Sharif, had got an early injury, and uh, the best for him as a technical man, so could have quickly um, substituted him. So they think that uh, they suffered uh, at the hands of Ghana due to poor tactical um, ability from the U.S. Um, citizen, Bob Bradley. So uh, for them, they were surprised. So uh, most of the spectators, before the final whistle went, walked off the pitch and went back to their hotel. Six one, so a World Cup qualifier is unbelievable because they be the highest uh, ever the Egyptians have beaten us before was five one in the nineteen sixty four Olympic qualifier in um, uh, Olympic game in uh, Tokyo and uh, I think that it was really surprising and most kind of sense of the game all the statisticians got it wrong because on paper they were ahead of us in terms of experience they were ahead of us but everything changed yesterday now. Okay. Now, Bob Bradley, you mentioned, uh, he's somebody who has been beaten twice uh, on these very important stages by, by Ghana. Um, have you heard any indications, especially with what the fans are saying about him, uh, that yeah. could he continue his relationship with Egypt? Yeah, when I spoke to journalists, they started bashing him. They started um, uh, writing, I have a Muhammad you, 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 you see, uh, he, he writes for today's paper in uh, Egypt, in Cairo to be specific, he was saying that Rod Bradley will not survive the second leg. We should not be surprised when we come for the second leg. He will not be the man in charge against Ghana. You also spoke about, uh, you know, the possible venues for the return leg. Um, have there been any uh, names of any possible venues mentioned away from Egypt as is being rumored that FIFA would order uh, a new venue to be named? Yeah, that, what, what we hear is that FIFA, uh, they, FIFA has written to the Egyptian FA telling them that uh, they need to choose a venue apart from uh, Cairo and uh, it's going to be difficult. But what we know, uh, what they are saying uh, is that their possible relocation will surely be maybe Sudan. That's what we hear. And uh, we don't know how far or authentic that is. But we're just praying that... Um, if it is true, uh, then they are likely to pitch their return leg in Sudan now. All right, Tony. Um, which names are being mentioned the most by the fans uh, on the streets in Kumasi, uh, you know, uh, after that game? Yeah, not, you know, the debate was between, you know, only Fatou uh, who was going to be in post. But earlier on, uh, I, I had some interviews with some key people and I told them that there is no way Olili was going to take the number one position from Fatal Dauda. And uh, yesterday everybody saw it. Yeah, there was some basic mistakes he did, but he just considered a goal which was through a penalty. No fault of his. It was uh, Sheet Smiler who caused it. And I think that everybody uh, was, I mean, for now on the streets of Kumasi, that the talk is all about Olili. All right, Tony, we'll say thank you very much for uh, the time and uh, have a safe flight back. Thank you, Nat. So, uh, Tony Bebley there, and all of this was made possible by a Stambic Bank, a switch to a Stambic account, and of course, uh, Antrac Air Total Flight Comfort, and the Glyco Group, uh, Glyco, we cushion you for life. Let's do a bit of uh, some messages that are coming in uh, on social media. Black Stars, no size, Brazil. Here we come. And this is from uh, Alvin Babbles. Uh, thank you very much, Alvin Babbles. Now, um, Mado Thomas says, uh, 
Nat, uh, all is set for Brazil. I have to get my ticket now. We will score Egypt uh, 2 in the return leg. Kudos to the boys. It's a pity for Bradley. Ghana, the African Brazil. Okay, thank you very much. Solomon Salim also sends this one. says, kudos to Ghana for the big win and glory all the way for West African countries. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that message. Not Egypt are still dangerous. And this is from Jerry Nanarich. So Jerry Nanarich is uh, just saying, in all the midst of the celebration, just uh, be wary of Egypt. They are still a very dangerous customer. Sam Sam Toga says, uh, Ghana, I don't believe in themselves, but Bob Bradley knows uh, that uh, Jet knows what Jet can do. Fireburn are sports critics. Let's uh, do a bit more. Oxlade uh, Kafui Ozil says, uh, who talks to Michael Essien gets size? Michael Essien, Sule Muntari, Didi Ayu, Kwejua Samoa, no size. Vamoose, Black Stars. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, uh, a message uh, on the Facebook wall, on my Facebook wall. So remember, it's uh, 1760. Also, alternatively, get on uh, Facebook, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto, and uh, put the comments there. Um, another one from uh, Yahya Yakubo says, uh, Good morning, Ghana. Inshallah, we are in Brazil already because the second leg will be a formality. Kudos to the big guns, SCN and Montari, for they really showed their class. Uh, Clement uh, Lakiba says, um, Congratulations to the Black Stars uh, for a massive win because we didn't expect it to be easy with six goals uh, uh, in a thriller. And thank God for hearing our prayers. Uh, greetings to Van Clemsey, Captain Dugo, and Palace players of uh, Kwasa. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Thomas Romeo Akonai says, uh, I'm proud to be Ghanaian. I'm really happy that Ghana won uh, yesterday. My man of the match, uh, Montari and Nathan, I like your suit. Okay, Prince Amwa Robinson says, um, Nat, I said we'll beat Egypt mercilessly. Kudos to Ghana Black Stars, but the bonus are too much. Abba. Okay, so... There we are. Uh, you've you, you've uh, ha had a feel of what, what everybody else is saying out there. Just in case uh, you want to join the conversations, you're free to do so. Get on, um, get, um, on our Facebook page and let's see uh, uh, what you also have to say about this, whether you think that the Black Stars uh, are on their way to uh, you know, uh, Brazil already with uh, the second leg uh, beckoning. And also, how do the Black Stars ensure uh, a similar performance and even more? A round of commercials and there will be more. Remember, the qualifiers from Europe, the sad story of uh, coach Bruno Metsu who led uh, Senegal to the World Cup in the year 2002. He had a long battle with cancer and he gave up finally. We'll talk about that and more when we uh, do a round of commercials and return. Thus and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Only on Joy Sports, the Premier League show. Multi TV is organizing a national installer training throughout the country. The training is for fresh people who would like to learn about satellite installation. Trainees will also go through some marketing tutorials to turn them into result-oriented salesmen. For those in the Eastern region, 
Training will be on the 13th of October. Pick a form at Satellite Zone in Kofordia. For those in Somania, training will be on the 12th of October. Pick a form at Technosat. For those in the Central Region, training will be on the 15th of October. Pick a form at Takulaha in Cape Coast. For those in the Western Region, training will be on the 17th of October. Pick a form at Antap in Takrade. For those in the Greater Accra Region, training will be on the 22nd to 24th October. Pick a form at the Multi TV office. For those in the Volta Region, training will be on the 29th October. Pick a form at Jerome in Ho. And for those in Hohwe, training will be on the 30th of October. Pick a form at Creative Ventures or call 0302-211-688 or 0244-340-424. And 0244-340-415. The French Splitting Party, Networking Defending, Crucial Phase. Hot and mouth moments and breathtaking goals of the beautiful game. Beyond Walcott, what a magnificent individual goal! Everything football on the football show on the Joy Sports Channel and Multi TV from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays. My name is George Addy Jr. and with my team of experts, expect greater sharp analysis as we cover every conceivable angle and examine every scenario of the old beautiful game. Remember, it's Mondays and Fridays on the Joy Sports Channel. This show is powered by Joy Sports. So feel how the game. That's it, and that's it for the show today. This midweek edition. I'm sure that you enjoyed yourself. Uh, the Black Stars is surely going to be a very big topic that will rage on and on. And of course, uh, you always have to keep it here on Joy Sports. Uh, new programs coming on this channel, so you uh, stay tuned. Now. Um, Thanks to the whole uh, production team, the team in Kumasi who did a wonderful job, Tony Bebley, uh, Sami Urenchi, uh, the technician on duty, Mohammed Yusif, the driver, everybody else. We say kudos to all of you. And uh, thanks to the production team here at Joy Sports here in Accra as well for uh, a great show. Uh, I'll be back on Friday with the weekend edition of the show. In the meantime, you all stay well. My name is Nathaniel Atto and I have love for sport. <laughs>